All right, team, I got a great one for you. This is from the reading specialist exam, the 62. And uh, it's another juicy question with some really good, a really good scenario. Now, this has an opening prompt and then it has a question. So I want you to uh, I want you to take a minute and I just want you to uh, we're going to take a minute, read it, pause me, and then we're going to talk about it. And then we're going to go to the actual question. But take a minute and read the prompt over. OK, um, go ahead. Do that now. All right. Number five, uh, I'm going to read it real quick and talk about some ideas. One of the children in the class, so this is connected to some of the previous questions that we've done um, that are all connected. You, you're seeing this string of questions, right? Like it's connected to this one right here. And, and I think it's connected to uh, this one here. So these are all sort of interconnected questions. And now we're arrived at this one right here. It says one of the children in the classroom. So, so we're in this kindergarten classroom. Let's say uh, one of the children in this classroom has limited prior formal and informal literacy experiences. So sometimes we say student with uh, limited informal and formal experiences. You've probably seen that phrase before somewhere. Okay. Um, meets individually with a reading specialist to work on emergent literacy skills. So let's think about that for a moment. Let's just take that kindergarten for a moment. Imagine it's kindergarten, five to six. What does that mean? Limited prior formal and informal literacy experiences. What does that mean? It, it means that that child, for a variety of different reasons, is at least two years behind in literacy development. So it's not like they're just behind. In this case right here, if they were in kindergarten, right? Then they would really be at that foundation. They would be really at that pre-literate level. So we're looking at two years behind. So we got our four to five and we have our uh, three, uh, three to four. So they're at least, they're significantly behind in literacy, exposure, development, with a whole bunch of skills. So here, we wouldn't be expecting them to necessarily do the alphabetical principle or inventive spelling or attend to, you know, forming a basic sentence and tend to and attend to uh, features of grammatical, you know, like uh, features like letter, capital letters and punctuation, things like that. No, that's this student is going to need some extra support. So that's why they're meeting individually with the reading specialist and they're working on emergent literacy skills. Comes up. So <clears throat> what does that mean? It means go back here. That they're at this stage. Right. And let me clear this off because it's gotten a little too messy. They're at this stage. And the teacher wants to help them get to sort of this stage here. Where they start to do some, you know, matching up, you know, they start to work with letters and have exposure to letters and eventually maybe start to match up certain things with letters. But we're, we're trying to bump them up, help them out. OK. All right, so they're going to be, our strategies have going to be very, very uh, fun, foundational things. Now let's go back to the question. Okay. So now they come up with this drawing here. They do this drawing here. Now let's look at this drawing here. Uh, it's got some details, right? They're, they're definitely at that um, pre-literate stage, yes, where there's no writing, there's no letters, there's no print. It's just a picture. So at this current stage in meeting with this teacher in their journal, they are definitely at that a pre-literate stage. Okay. All right. Let's um, let's read the question now. Now you have um, two minutes. I want you to read this question. Go ahead. Do that now. Go. And unpause. And let's just write down that we have pre-literate. I sometimes actually like to do a, if we're ascending, I like to do like steps. Pre-literate, emergent, transitional, fluent. The child is definitely at that um, pre-literate stage with just the drawings, the pictures, right? 
Given the uh, child's current literacy development at this preliterate stage of writing, which of the following state uh, strategies would be most appropriate for the reading specialist to promote a child's understanding of the function of print? So it didn't say what's going to help them with inventive spelling. It did not say, hey, they're at the preliterate stage. When are they going to learn grammar and grammatical features of a sentence? Right? So if we see any of that, we could cross that one off because they're they're not at the uh, alphabetical principle yet, right? And they're not at uh, fluent writing. So they're not going to, I'm just going to use these symbols just to indicate ideas. So we're not doing alphabetical principle. We're not attending to any type of punctuation, right? Quotate, we're not doing any of that. So those things would be out. I don't even know if they're there, but um, I'm just saying they would be out if that was what was suggested. So let's see, we're trying to come up with something that matches up the picture with awareness of pr with print. So is it D, write the child's name on a card and ask the child to copy it carefully above their drawing. Okay, so remember the name, I'll write down my name here, Chris. This is the first thing a child gets exposed to. And I think this is a great, the name is great for, for alphabet knowledge if you're trying to work on the alphabet. Right. And, and basic and also early, early emergent letter formation skills. OK, but but that's all. That's what it would be good for. OK, so. That's not that has nothing to do with the picture carries meaning. That is just because, look, it's it's happening on a card. So that it's like they do this and then you do something and you write it in a card and then you take the card and you put it on that. They're just copying what you did onto a sheet of paper that happens to have their picture on it. So that's not necessarily um, matching up the picture with an idea. That's you taking an idea, a writing activity and using that sheet of paper as a sheet of paper to put your name on someone's artwork. So I don't think that's the best one for the function of print. Maybe for basic alphabetical awareness and, and maybe early emergent you know, use of letters and and you know maybe, but not necessarily the function of print with this picture. How about this one? B, think aloud about the child's drawing. Example, I see, by the way, I love that nice use of e.g. This is a great way when you're doing your essays, you wanna use this too, parentheses e.g. comma, include that in your essays. Okay, but here, example, I think a friendly dog, I see a friendly dog in a house and then sounding it out, dog while writing the words on the page. Okay, doing that, duh, uh, guh, and then writing the words on the page, duh, I hear a dog, is that a dog? That dog is has a duh, uh, guh, and taking those sounds, duh, uh, guh, and then matching them up with their predictable uh, graphemes or letters, duh, right? Duh, uh, guh, that's a great activity for the alphabetical principle, right? So that is an, so if you wanted to, that would be a great activity to promote the alphabetical principle. But guess what team? This child is not there. They are at that preliterate stage and jumping into letter sound correspondence with the alphabetical principle, it's, it's not, it's not going to be the best option. You know why I like B as an option? It's because they don't say the word alphabetical principle, right? They you give a scenario and you need to realize that scenario is an alphabetical principle scenario. And then you need a Rolodex that in your brain. So if you ever see a, uh, an activity like that, you're like, that's an example where the student is practicing the alphabetical principle, right? And basic letter sound correspondence or sound letter correspondence. Okay, okay, let's keep going. Um, okay, so it's not A, it's not B. How about D? Transcribing what the child said. Okay, no, no, let's pretend I didn't say that. What about C? Showing the child a page from a, a picture book and suggesting the child try to add some of the letters to their own drawing. <laughs> Showing the child a page from a picture book and suggesting the child try to add some of the letters to their drawing. Just, just copy this. Copy this onto that. G. I mean, I guess they're like showing a picture of a dog and being like, here's a picture of a dog. Put this word on your page, which I kind of feel like, you know, 
that's it's possible that that might happen in an activity if you're doing it like here's a dog now you know how to spell dog but that's not that's not um wouldn't help them necessarily with a function of print i mean it might in some way because they'd be like that's but but they're not there yet so that activity um it's not going to help them so what is so maybe you should ask them what the picture is about and that's what d does right Transcribe what the child says about their drawing as a caption and read it back to them. So you ask them, what is this a picture of? Oh, it's it's not a dog. It's something else. Oh, it's a deer. Oh, it's a deer. A deer that you saw by your house. Oh, that's completely different than a dog. Because if I put dog on it, on your picture, then uh, that would be completely wrong, wouldn't it? And they'd be like, yeah, that'd be wrong. So I like this. So, so this is very important. Whenever you see this activity, transcribing what the child says about the drawing and the teacher, so they say it and then you draw it. When the teacher transcribes what the children say, this is that, this is, you know, it's showing an awareness that print carries meaning. Team, we saw these questions earlier, right? This, the teacher, the students describe their day, the teacher writes it on the board, when the students describe their day and the teacher writes it on the board and reads it back to them, that is showing an awareness of print. That is a print awareness uh, question. This question itself could have easily been put in that previous section of the class involving print awareness. I'm only putting it in the writing section because it fits into these other writing questions. But this is definitely, this is really technically, this is a, at the pre-literate level, we're, we're dealing with print print awareness and functions of print. So this could have easily have gone into a print awareness question. The answer for this one is D. And it's a great question, team. Okay? Uh, team, I hope you're enjoying these, these harder questions from the 62. Don't always get to do them, but there's some good ones. And this one right here, great question, team. The answer here is D. Let's go to the next one. <laughs>